Warning, the opinions expressed in the following program are that of the host and or guests. They do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Complex Networks, Yahoo Sports, its affiliates, or any employee thereof. This show may contain adult humor and profanity and may not be suitable for general audiences. Now that we got all that corporate bullshit out the way, let's start the show. Oh, hey, man. Tough loss for the Saints, but keep your head up. All right, we'll see you later. No wash? No wash? No flag? No flag on a no wash. Yo, that's ridiculous. So it just kind of depends on how far up that ladder you want to climb, sweetheart. Or if you want to stay below me forever. It's really up to you. Is this real? This is the most me too shit ever. And it's no call? I mean, how bad do you want that call? Come on, ref. That's an obvious penalty. Bash in the office microwave. Throw the flag. Throw it. How's that a no call? Oh, my oh God. What is it? Oh. Oh, my God. Oh. In retrospect, that was a bad no call on my part. I should have thrown the flag. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry you get that warm, wet, stank fish smell out of my nose. In LA, there's no such thing as a bad call. There's no such thing as a blown call out here. Sorry, Saints fans. Just have a good day in a hurricane. You can wait till next year. This is episode 21 of Mostly Football. We finally have our Super Bowl teams. It's perfect because Martellus won his Super Bowl with the Patriots. James this week is a Rams fan. Hell yeah! So we're we're ready and rock and rolling for Super Bowl 53. I'm Ben Lyons, and as you guys know, this is the only Rams shirt that I own. I've worn it like eight times this year. It's the ideal mostly football matchup, isn't it, Martellus? Us, even you are excited for this. Yeah, we got a true Rams fan, we got a true Pats fan, and we have a true Atlanta fan. Yeah, a, <laughs> a fan a, a of fan all of, things. A fan of Atlanta. The city, <laughs> the city of Atlanta. <laughs> all season, I have always repped Atlanta non sports. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. so it's like we're all going to go there, so I'm super excited about that next week's episode. That's right. Most football will be down in the A next week. I'm yeah. excited. But I mean, this is Can sort you of. Say the A? The A? Can he say that? Why could? Why can't I say that? I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> oh man! All right, we got a lot big show. I know, I know, Super Bowl cool. 53 in the A. It's going down. It's Tom versus Time, part 100. I mean, Brady and Belichick and the Pats have been in the Super Bowl what nine times together. They're going for win number six, which is absolutely insane. They're fifth without Martellus Bennett, trying to outsmart Goff, his mastermind child prodigy of a coach, Sean McVay, and the Rams. Vegas is expecting the biggest offensive explosion in Super Bowl history, so. I don't know, it's probably gonna be a low scoring game, right? What are your first kind of thoughts about Super Bowl 53? I don't think that the score, I mean, you look at everyone, like the way the Chiefs game played out, the point star has been scored in the fourth quarter, so it's almost like boxing, right? You feel each other out a little bit, you don't wanna give away too much, you kinda see what someone else is doing, and everyone's ready to make adjustments. And that's what happened in the Chiefs game. Chiefs made adjustments, Patriots made adjustments. So then that's when things started to open up a little bit more. You see what kind of punches they wanna throw, and how they wanna attack you, and the things they wanna do, and then you come up with your counter plan, and that's when the game really opened up. So I don't really think it's gonna come out the gate where I think early in the game there's gonna be some early points because people wanna scheme up their first 15 plays, on a call sheet, and those are going to be like their big hitters to get points right away and get on the board. But from then on, it's like when you first come out in the first round, boom, 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 boom. And then from then on, you kind of come back a little bit and see, damn, that that worked, that didn't work. And then you start to get technical about it. Well, especially Super Bowls because it's such a weird atmosphere. There's so much hype. Two weeks now leading up to it, it's going to be a little while as the teams feel each other out. But talk about that hype that you were feeling here in L.A. The Rams are, are, are back in L.A. and oh, yeah. they're in the Super Bowl. The two weeks leading up to it describes sort of the atmosphere. I mean, of course, you know, LA is hype, but like all that aside, I feel like this is episode 21 you said. Like, I think all of mostly football fans want to know for the Super Bowl who's the lion and who's the gazelle? I, that's the only way I can compartmentalize the Super Bowl. Well, this is pretty obvious. This is your brand. Yes, this is pretty obvious. The Patriots are the gazelles. 
Wow. Really? That's surprising. That's See? not pretty obvious. Well, the two yeah. of us are sitting here like, huh? Well, the, Speak on it, Marty. Because the Rams are the younger team. The Patriots have been there. But they've just been out the, they've been able to outrun every single line that's been chasing them. The, the Kansas City Chiefs, they were the Lions. They didn't get the Gazelle. They didn't get to eat. This, this week in the Super Bowl, the next week in the Super Bowl, whenever the Super Bowl fucking happens, the <laughs> Rams are going to be the Lions. They have to chase and hope they could capture their Gazelle. Mm. Wow. All right. I guess that makes somewhat of sense. <laughs> Who do you think are the New England – who's the New England Patriots of the comedy world? I feel like a Seinfeld slash even a Kevin Hart, like where everybody uh, – Now he's a receiver. <laughs> I mean, I don't even understand. I don't even understand what that means. He has to be like a running back. I mean, there's, no, there's not many black receivers in, uh, with the Patriots. If you're talking about player. He's talking about team. I'm just saying, like, okay. results-wise, like – consistency. They're consistency. The they're, they're, they're making money. They're successful. Even if maybe half the whole comedy game doesn't even like them. You know, like, they have a lot of haters or whatever, but it's like they have enough. They, they just – no matter what, no matter how you might feel about night school, you know what I'm saying – Kevin Hart made the most, made was like up there, top two of like money made in comedy. No matter if you, if you like well, Jerry speaking, Seinfeld. Well, speaking like, of the haters, I mean, definitely Kevin Hart has a bunch of them, as do the Patriots. And so yeah. does this guy, Drake, because he's owned his supposed curse that he's bad luck for any team's bandwagon that he jumps on. He's sporting a sweatshirt repping all four teams prior to last week's championship Sunday. And it didn't take long for the internet, of course, to clap back, photoshopping out the Saints and the Chiefs. So let me speak for all of LA, all Rams fans everywhere. We're just take off the damn sweatshirt, Drake. All and right? let, me, let me speak for myself. Night School is not a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it the other day. Like, what is this shit? Like, I, it was just not a good movie. Yeah, it's not even a good movie for And it's too long. It's like two hours of terribleness. I, I, I haven't seen it. Okay, just want to let you know. Plenty <laughs> of Super Bowl talk ahead on the show. Let's switch gears from night school, shall we? The one comic no one's going to fuck with is here. Former MMA fighter Brendan Schaub joins us. And speaking of comedians, Finesse Mitchell, he's in the house to play How Many Fucks. And if TB12 wins his sixth, sixth Super Bowl, will he actually retire? Plus, is Pat Mahomes really worth $200 million the Chiefs might pay him? And does Drew Brees go down as a top five QB of all time? We'll get to all of it. But, Marty, we start with your Patriots, who are headed to their third straight Super Bowl. Sunday's 37-31 to 31 victory over the Chiefs was vintage Brady and Belichick in their 13th. I think they're a 13-play, 75-yard walk-off drive. Brady completed three third and tens. Never even allowed Mahomes and the Chiefs to touch the ball in overtime. The Pats win. It's nice full circle, and they begin their historic Super Bowl run beating the St. Louis Rams. St. Louis Rams. Back in February 2002, 2002. So, Marty, TB12 is in your phone. He would have been on the show this week had the Pats lost, I know. So, is he going to retire if they win, you think? I'm not sure, but I think it's a great way to walk off. Right, you get your sixth Super Bowl. You, you, um, you cement yourself in the greatest of all time to play the sport. I think it's a good way to end, the, to end this book. You know what I'm saying? What happens next year? The team's going to be a little different. Other guys are going to leave the team. This is a final chapter. You know, I think it is a great final chapter. If I was writing the script myself, James, <laughs> it would be the way I would, I, would, I would definitely write this to be the end of for him. James, do you think Giselle wants this to be the end for, for Tom out there playing every Sunday? I'm sure Giselle does. I'm sure the kids do. But at the same time, you know, you love the game. You like it, 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 it is who you are. And if he can still do it, if he still has an opportunity, if they're literally not kicking him out of the locker room, like, I mean, Peyton Manning's last game, he was throwing ducks up there, and he couldn't throw it more than 20 yards. Tom's out there still slinging it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I think the, the, the other thing, too, is, like, uh, when you get an older player, there's a lot of changes that happen on teams that you lose a lot of guys, and a lot of guys come in. I don't think that's going to come into play with Brady because there's been so many guys he played with that are not – there's people commentating oh. that was his teammates that were Super Bowl champions. He's throwing <laughs> touchdown passes to guys who now make, you know, animated cartoons and, like, crazy books. And he yeah. has other guys who have been to jail. And he has other guys who have been retired and on TV. I mean, you think back to 2002? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's crazy. I was in high school. Right. Yeah. You're back in high school, yeah. and then he was in the Super Bowl. And then now you're out of the league, and he's still in the Super Bowl. I remember the year I got drafted was it when um, – they caught the crazy catch in Arizona. I was trying right, to David Tyree. Yeah, I was there. I was there. I hope day. he starts giving speeches and he's like, I've thrown passes to people who who, who write books and movies and 
and, and motherfuckers in jail. Like, <laughs> the, the whole game. The whole game, man. People who are Killers just... and artists. <laughs> well, Brady sought out uh, Pat Mahomes from, from one icon to the next star on the rise after the game on Sunday in the locker room to have a quick chat. And actually, you know, mostly football being the greatest show ever, we have exclusive video of that conversation. <laughs> I'm a failure. Wow, Tom Brady coming to see me after the AFC Championship game? What a classy gesture. Look, Pat, I just want to say you played a great game. <laughs> and even though I made you my son and the Chiefs defense my bitch, <laughs> I really respect you, and I think you're going to be a great quarterback in the National Football League. Well, thanks a lot, Tom Brady. That means a lot coming from you. <laughs> oh, oh, geez, you did it again. <laughs> oh, and again. Hey, look, I have some nasal spray in my locker if you want any. Where's that laser coming from? My bad. We're just trying to get a competitive advantage. Put her there, Mahomes. Or should I say Mahomes, boy? Um, how about we just dap instead? It is flu season. Nonsense. Elite quarterbacks don't dap. They shake hands. <laughs> have a great off season, son. Daddy will see you next year. I'm gonna need a napkin. We got cameras everywhere. Now, you know who's not feeling the Chiefs loss? That's D Ford. The D Ford, who's a middle aged woman in England, who's being mistaken on social media for the Chiefs D Ford, who was called off sides with around a minute left in regulation, negating a Brady interception that most likely would have sent Kansas City to the Super Bowl. Now, Chiefs fans have lashed out at the wrong Ford. We gotta give her some credit. She really held her own. Now, here's a Michigan fan, not me, by the way, who tweeted, Thanks, D Ford, for being offside in regulation game. You would be going to the effing Super Bowl. Her response? Oh, please, if you're going to swear, spell it properly. I don't know why she has a British accent on Twitter. But uh, to whoever tweeted, D Ford, you took food from my family's mouth tonight because you couldn't get your 300 pound ass on your side. The classy Ford shot back, 300 pound, how dare you, sir? Hashtag double chin. Marty, you enjoy going back and forth with the haters on Twitter. I don't have time for that shit. I don't, it's not going back and forth with haters. What I am doing, I am engaging in conversation, engaging in banter. Whether it's something nice someone says or something that's foolish that someone says, I like both sides of the conversation. I love to converse with others. And if you want to be a dick, then I, shit, <laughs> I'm a bust a nut. That's that's Marty banter. James, James is ready to jump in, and then just got banter, got Martyed. Yeah, yeah. There's certain things you can't follow. Nope, that's it. All right. Well, meantime, in the NFC Championship game, it was all about the blown call. Yep. Everybody watching at home, everyone in the Superdome, the head of officials, all the Rams fans out here in LA who are on the beach not watching the game. Even Rams cornerback Nickel Roby Coleman knew his helmet to helmet hit was pass interference. Interference, but. Instead of Saints ball, first and 10 inside the five, well, the rest, if you're a New Orleans Saints fan, shout out to Anthony Mackie, is heartbreak history. At least two lawsuits have been filed now in the Big Easy to uh, try to compel Roger Goodell to use his executive powers to have the game replayed with 149 to go. That's obviously not going to happen. So, Marty, should the league uh, allow coaches to challenge pass interference plays like this in the future, you think? I feel like it should be like the court of law. Challenge whatever the fuck you want to challenge. Like, right? You have two flags, throw them, you lose them if the challenge is not goes your way. Challenge anything and everything. Why are there only certain things that can be challenged and things that can't be challenged? Not like you're getting more challenges. You still have two. So people talking about, like, the time and the way the clock is going to change. It's going to take the same amount of time to challenge whoever it is they want to challenge. So it may be even faster. Like, oh, yeah, I wasn't passing interference. It was. But, like, when shit like this happens and they miss a call because there are humans that's making a cause. It's not like it's an algorithm for calls because there are judgment. There, are, there is judgment in the referee's job. So, like, but they're going to miss things. And sometimes they miss shit that's obvious. You know what I'm saying? And it should be able to be challenged. And you should be able to be like, look, replay it. Like, we think this, whether it's a holding, anything that could change the game should be challenging. The game should not be, ref in, should not be left in the hands of kickers and should not be left in the hands of referees. James, <laughs> are refs gazelles or lions? And what are the players? Uh -huh. Mm. Whoo. All right, I'll let you think on that one. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, do, I, I do have Russell to say something. Russell be zebras, first that, of all. That the, way, the, the, way Saints, <laughs> the way Saints felt about that play is the way black people feel when cops get off for, like, beating up black people in the streets. It's That's like, very it's, true. That's a blown call. 
Yes. How did you not see that? That's very true. I'd like to challenge it. Yeah. But we can't. That that play was the justice system. That is the justice system. The football system. play. That's a well Ooh, played. I just went yeah. Marty. Yeah, you yes. just ran Marty on us right Ooh, there. All right. I'm well, back. I'm back to A Louisiana optometrist is offering free eye exams to all NFL officials next year. Other reactions from L.A. to New Orleans, of course, predictably run the gamut. Uh, shout out to Todd Gurley, who was benched and admitted he was, quote, sorry as hell. And he kind of was. And then, on the, and then he went on to troll Saints fans with this Photoshop post of him exchanging jerseys with ref Bill Vinovich. Shout out to TG30. I love that right there. Here's Rams fan YG. Had a big year here in LA as a Rams fan, YG. Yeah. Watching Greg yeah. the Leg kick the 57-yard game-winning field goal. That was an amazing moment. Was that? That's f***ing good, We go to the Super Bowl, Let's go! I like the half sweater shirt thing or what? Uh, now this guy in New Orleans, meantime, he didn't take the loss really in stride. This is amazing. The big dude won the TV nothing. And then they say LA isn't really a sports town. Well, really? Well, check out the super intense fans going crazy in this sports bar here in LA. It was nuts. So wild, like any town USA. All right, for a real reaction, we got our man on the scene. Best friend, Desi, the EGOT winner himself. He's already out in the A. He's already in Atlanta. He's trying to hook up with the halftime entertainment. That sounded weird. <laughs> What's up, MFers? This is best friend, Desi, coming to you live from ATL, shouty. Now, last week, we got big time by Travis Scott. But this week, we're in the home of the Super Bowl. And I got none other than Big Boy from Outcast ready to do an interview right now. Who the who? Hey, Big Boy, Desi Brown, mostly football. You ready to do this interview? What you mean, no? Well, I ain't leaving without my in. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Why are you taking that pit bull off the leash? Big boy, daddy fast sack. Stop playing, stop. Man, big boy on one right now, said he ain't trying to do no interview, and he got his pit bull looking at me like a snack, but this is Desi Brown from Mostly Football. Back to you in the studio, I'm getting out of here. Oh, yeah, he ran to the Desi. He we... ran to a big boy's dog. Oh, no. We got to get the camera changed. <laughs> they got a moment of silence, man. I don't know if Destiny made it. Oh, man. Big boy not hooking up the interview. That wow. was weak, man. All right. Well, Drew Brees, uh, he's for sure going to be fitted for a gold jacket someday after he retires. But what is Drew Brees' legacy? 40-year-old already owns the all-time record for yards and completions. He's going to break Peyton Manning's mark for touchdowns before it's all said and done. And he's even won a Super Bowl. Marty, uh, Drew Brees is the Saints. Should he be in the conversation for top five QBs? Uh, yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, num statistically, numbers are up there. If you talk about Dan Marino, Dan Marino didn't win anything. And at least Brees has won. Um, championship, yep. you know, so like I think numbers wise, when you're at the top of all those categories and in the history of football, then you're obviously at the top of the list of quarterbacks. I feel like if he had gone on to the Super Bowl this week, we'd be talking about the like culmination of Drew yeah, Brees. Sure. He's a goat, but nope, sorry, they blew the call. All right, maybe but one. The, but, <laughs> Drew, but the thing about Drew Brees is, it's really, he's almost like LeBron in a way. Like it's never really his fault when they lose. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's always something else happening like this, a tip in the air, the balls get, like it's always something crazy that's happening. What do you think about LeBron for his greatness and how amazing he was? He won one title in 11 years in Cleveland. Yeah. You would think when it's all said and done for how great he was in Ohio, he could have gotten more. Yes. Same thing with Drew Brees. Yes. Like he is the Saints. He's, they win all the time. But and he's going to have one Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. All right. But point, then you Mark. have the same thing with Aaron Rodgers. It's like, it's like they're a bunch of Allen Iversons of the NFL. You lost me on that one. All right. Maybe one day Patrick Mahomes breaks Breeze's records. Regardless, it's going to cost the Chiefs. Kansas City reportedly is ready to make Mahomes the first $200 million player in league history. In his first full season, the 23-year-old passed for 5,100 yards and 50 touchdowns, bringing Madden to life en route to a likely MVP award season. Marty, I mean, it says in the prompter to say it sounds like a bargain, but I'm not going to say that because it's not. It's $200 million. Well, how much did Kirk Cousins get paid? How many wins did the Vikings have in but the playoffs? Fair, this year? But Kirk Cousins got like 100 and what million? Right, but all the top six highest paid quarterbacks in the league, their teams didn't make the playoffs. So why saying. should you pay a quarterback that much money? Because his team did make the playoffs. When he wasn't making that much money. I don't know. I mean, $200 million, it kind of signs you up then. To not make the playoffs. Reward a guy. Invest in. Like, it's better to – you have to 
numbers game, like the way that money is spread out, it really doesn't matter if it's $200 million, right? Well, 84 of it's guaranteed. Okay. Yes, that's all that really matters. And if you think of how long he's going to be good, and it's, it's a good investment because the quarterback has a, the, the most longevity out of any player on the field. So if you invest in a position, more likely if it's a big investment, that position is the best way to spend your money because you know they're going to be around for a long time. You know, they got so many rules to protect them, the way they get tackled. You can't hit them high, can't hit them low. You got to hit them like right here in the middle of the – the diaphragm and below the esophagus. So anything else is just is just bad shots. You can't do it. So, so I think that's a good investment for them. You see what he is. The thing I liked about him the most when I watched that championship game is that he has ice in his veins. Never did he look down or get like flustered or anything. He was just always cool, calm, and collected, and very sure about himself. Like I'm about to go score. Right. And it wasn't even like he was overly boisterous to try to mask some type of fear. He wasn't like super high octane. He, he was just cool, calm. Yeah. Collected. He yeah, was just yeah. like cool and calm. And the other guy I saw with that same demeanor. It's Tom. Tom is like that. When we be in games, Tom would still be cool and calm. He always talk a little bit and say things to the team just like um, Pat did. But at the same time, he had that. He has that it factor. You know, he, I was watching a lot of quarterbacks. They'd be like, "Damn, I hope, I hope we do something right here." <laughs> Nah, he was just like, give me the ball, I got this. Even after he throws an interception or fumble, he walks off the field like, all right, I'll make up for the next play. You know who has that Mahomes swag as well? I saw him on his Comedy Central special. It was James Davis. Now, you were paid nine bucks for that. How did you spend that money? Can you imagine getting a nine-figure deal someday? I mean, I definitely I got paid ten bucks. <laughs> but, like, with that kind of money, I'm, I'm doing, like, Mike, I'm doing, like, yo, brother, I'm going to have just houses <laughs> – I'm having land just everywhere. Spin the, spin the globe I, and just yeah, whatever just you land on. There and there and there and there. A couple Malibu spots, maybe buy a golf course. That's how I know saying? you're going to go broke very fast. <laughs> yeah, Pat Mahomes is like house buying some ketchup and that's million. it. That's not that much money. <laughs> 200 million. That's Someone who's probably not going broke is Tony Romo. and He might also be in line for making some more money. He might be in line for a raise. Romo's wrapping up a deal that pays him around $4 million a year. And CBS is looking to give him even more money. His teams are supposedly trying to lure him out of retirement. Still hoping that, you know, he might get back on a football field. Marty, do uh, you think he should end his short-lived career as an announcer, kind of drop the mic and go play again or even now, be a coach? This is a great marketing ploy to get more money. Let's just tell him that I can still play. I'm still young enough where I could go out there. So they give me more money to do what I'm Jay doing. Jay Cutler kind of did the opposite of this, right? He was like, they're going to give me a broadcast deal, but all right, I'll go get this $10 million Yeah, I wish I would got to see Jay Cutler calls game, though. Like, that would have been awesome. I mean, I just could imagine him up there just like, yeah, fuck, he threw the ball. Great Great play. Great play. Well, then again, Jay Cutler is highly intelligent. Like, he doesn't – I don't think he – I don't know if people talk about how intelligent that he is enough. But I think that if Romo – I think Romo does a great job. I predicted this in my – earlier in the year when I did my animated um, Gridiron Heights for the Bleacher Report earlier in this year when I drew. I can't keep up, man. There's so many projects. I don't remember that I predicted him calling the plays the way that he did. Well, speaking of predicting, no reason for Romo to quit his day job when he's predicting what the teams are actually going to run right before the play. Uh, Romo Stradamus is so accurate at this. It's like he can actually see into the future. You have questions? Well, Mr. Romo has answers. Todd in Los Angeles, you want to know if you're going to get benched again in the Super Bowl. Damn, bro, you read my mind. Well, my prediction is that if you keep dropping open passes, you'll be posted on Chilligan's Island again. Bill in New England, you want to know what place the Rams are going to run in the Super Bowl, and you already hired a videographer, didn't you? Wow, that's very astute of you, Mr. Romo. Mm -hmm. Well, I predict that no video recording devices will be allowed at the Rams walkthrough. Sorry, buddy. Next up, Jerry in Dallas. You want to know if the Cowboys will ever win another Super Bowl, don't you? How did you know that? Well, will we? Getting a vision, it's very vivid. No, the Cowboys will catch L's for all of eternity. <laughs> Need your future predicted? Well, then holler at Mr. Romo. Call me now! I already, I already murdered it. <laughs> but hey, I, I was watching that game and like as like someone who doesn't know that much football, I was blown away. Like, especially that Gronk slant.
He was like, this, I was like, yo, he just said it. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I but, was, there's, but the thing is, there's only so many plays you could do in the NFL, and it's always given away by formations. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But everybody, whatever. Everybody For us civilians, we were like, holy shit. Exactly. Tony exactly. Romo can see exactly. the future. Oh, no, my God. Exactly. It was great what he's doing, but I'm saying, like, when we, like. You hating. It's cool. I'm not well, hating. Listen. I said it was great. Like, I think Romo's a good announcer. But could. Better than Witten. But true. But could Romo predict the Academy Award winners? Wakanda forever. Black Panther made history this week when it became the first superhero film to earn a Best Picture nomination. Ben, you're a cinephile. Marty, you're a Marvel geek. Are we feeling this? Are we feeling the Black Panther I wouldn't say that I was a Marvel geek. I thought Black Panther was an entertaining film. I'm bummed Ryan Cougar didn't get a nomination. It's yeah. great the film got nominated, but the only reason that movie is in the Best Picture conversation, I think, is because of Ryan Cougar. Like, he's such an amazing filmmaker. Tons of technical nominations. Let's give it to the dude. I mean, some of the, like, the fighting scene, I'd say my favorite scene in there was a the fight scene. It was one take. In the casino, that in tracking the casino. shot in the casino. It's amazing. That tracking shot was a beautiful shot in the film. Like, that yeah, was, dude. yeah, he actually, like, that was excellent. I hate when people say actually in compliments. He actually, like. We thought normally, it was going to be crap. Normally he's weak, but he actually. actually you know that. Just, but whatever, whatever, whatever. I know. It was I know good. you're not a hater. I like Ryan. Next I, I, I don't How about the director of Cold War, guys? Can we talk about him? Absolutely not. Who that is. Absolutely not. Uh, Aisha Curry, that's uh, Steph's wife, says the secret to her successful eight year marriage is putting she and her husband first, ahead of their three kids. I don't have kids, at least none that I'm aware of. Hey, Marty. I gotta figure your daughter Jet rules the house. What's up? Well, I mean, if she put her husband first, there wouldn't be no kids. <laughs> what? <laughs> they can't have no kids out of a relationship. I think. I mean, yeah. I I feel like, as a parent, it's it's interesting. Like, when you have kids, okay. So the whole thing about relationships, and whenever you get in a serious relationship, the idea is to actually love someone more than you love yourself, right? Mm -hmm and to actually put someone before you put yourself first. It's a selfless act to be in love and to be in a marriage. And you have to think of others. To be a successful marriage, you have to be empathetic, whether it's taking, it's not thinking of myself first, but it's thinking of my wife first and it's thinking of my daughter first before I think of myself. So I think there is interest in it. Like you have to think of both, I, who cares what order it goes in? I'm thinking of all the motherfuckers. I'm thinking of Jet and my wife, but if I think of my wife at this moment, my daughter at this moment, my daughter is, is always gonna flip and flop. You know what I'm saying? Like, gotta do what's best for Jet, you know what I'm saying? Do best, but doing what's best for my wife is also doing what's best for Jet. See, this sounds like some rich shit. You, know, you that, can be like, that, you know what? I could put my husband above my kids because we have some help and my kids can get looked after and watched by somebody else. Well, I never, we've never had exactly. any. We've never me had and my any. husband can go. And that's why you we've have never, a 50 50. Yeah, we when you have the jet and the, 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 the lavish lifestyle of a curry, you can have some, 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 some help. strangers you yeah. trust, <laughs> watch your kids, and you can go to. Uh, Maldives for the weekend. Yeah, we've never had anyone, like, we never had one, anyone in the house to watch Jet. Like, I was a single dad for the last eight days. My wife been in Africa, and that shit was crazy. What the fuck? I was like, God damn, man, I miss my <laughs> wife. Like, this shit, like, we, I need to think, I need someone to think of me, because it's like that whole moment, like, being a single parent. Yeah, I went to Marty's <laughs> studio yesterday, and it was his last day of, like, being single right. dad, and I can I, tell, dude, you were hanging on by a thread. <laughs> I was hanging on by a thread, <laughs> like a strolling yeah, thread, single, and it's just, as a single, like, it's like, see, like just to see this, like, four-year-old girl, single, like, but, run yes, circles around this enormous I'll just, human. Was I've like, never been in a situation, like, three days or whatever is cool. That's, you know, I have my kid. I don't babysit, you can't babysit your own kid, you know what I'm saying? Nah, it's your kid. Yeah, it's your kid. But it's just crazy to be like uh, that moment. You so did it. You got through like, it, man. You got through it. You what I'm trying it. to say is I understand when you have two people in the household, you could think like this. When there's one person in the household, as a parent, it's harder to think of yourself first when you always have to put the kid first. But when there's two people in the household, it's easier to think of each other and think of the kid. Because when you're thinking of me, I'm thinking of the child. When I'm thinking of you, you're thinking of the child. But as a single parent, I... You know, not that I am a single parent, not that my experience was anything close to it, but the moments <laughs> of having to think things through in that order, like being the one to pick her up from school and not having that, so it's just a whole yeah. thing. Uh, audio book comes out uh, next summer, how to, <laughs> how to Be a Single Parent, Martellus Bennett. Listen, uh, next door, conservative <laughs> political commentator Tommy Lahren made a dumbass move of insulting Cardi B's intelligence for endorsing Democrats. Cardi immediately broke off some straight Dominican South Bronx flavor in her ass, tweeting, leave me alone, I will dog walk you. Drop the mic.
I don't even know if that's really how she sounds. Probably not, but I, I had fun. So. It was close. I'm glad you said something about the Bronx because it like took me back to living in New York. Because like when that's she they... pulls out like her New York vibe, I'm all in. On it makes you feel warm. People inside. like Tommy like don't see. When do you like pull out your New York vibe? Every single day, waking up and walking around. It's called being from New York. You can't yo take son, that away from me. Yo son, I'm from New York City, <laughs> man. It, it emanates. Well, I it think emanates. I think Tommy needs to shut the fuck up. Anytime someone Ooh. black that's like in uh -oh. the world or wherever they in, uh -oh. she always want to commentate and talk about. Their intelligent, their their intelligence, or insult their intellectual being, saying that they're not certified to talk about this or talk about that because they do this or that. Just shut the fuck up and do better at your job. So weak, man. I have no interest. And you just want to have this banter with celebrities so that they could build your status, but no one gives a fuck about you. You're terrible at what you do, and no one's listening to you. So so hush up. Right on. So hush up, Tommy. You done brought the Tupac out of Marty. Yeah. Either way. Next story. The Cash Me Out girl is cashing it inside, outside, every which place. 15-year-old Danielle Bergoli, aka Bad Baby, signed a six-month $900,000 endorsement deal, plus a percentage of the sales with Copycat Beauty Line. In the first day, they did 500 grand in sales. Dr. Phil, you can kiss her rich ass. She getting that money. I'm just, this money, is great money, for her money. that she's able to make money off of whatever the fuck she's doing. But the craziest thing is, 900,000? Whoever negotiated her deal should push it up to one more hundred thousand dollars and made it one million. Like, what the fuck? Who did that deal? 900,000? Or how about whoever negotiated her deal had to work their ass up to get it from no. probably the 200,000 she really deserved. If we had 900,000 900, here, if we had 900,000, we could get, we, you got something else in your pocket. We're going to one million. Yeah, I didn't know she was 15, man. That's crazy. She's been out for a minute. Like, I didn't right? realize how young she was. That's kind of nuts. She's been getting that Olsen money. And she's worth, she's worth more than James. Ooh, damn. <laughs> no, no. Manny Pacquiao. Speaking of beatdowns, Manny Pacquiao put a beatdown on Adrian Broner, landing 112 punches to Broner's 50 to win a unanimous decision in the welterweight title. The only one alive who didn't see it that way was Broner. Everybody out there know I beat him. I controlled the fight. He was missing. I hit him clean more times. I beat him. You're 3-3-1 three, three and one in your last seven fights. What will you do next? Hey, I'm 3-3-1 three, three in my last seven, but I'll be 7-0 seven -oh against you. Well, that wouldn't mean much. That's the end of this interview. Uh, <laughs> That's the end of this interview. Well, Adrian, man, much. take your job seriously, man. Like, you hit the dude 50 times. I can hit Pacquiao 50 times. Hey, so I'm, not, I'm not a big Jim, Jim Gray fan, but that was kind of it a good little sign yeah, off yeah. there. <laughs> Today's about good clapbacks. I appreciate it. Well, uh, Adrian, stay classy. It wasn't all good news for Pac-Man. His L.A. house was robbed during the fight. Oh, shit. Maybe the thieves knew he was out for the night. Just saying. Good planning, robbers. Great, maybe, great choice. I'm maybe right. Broner was like, they robbed me of this fight? We were gonna rob his house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> gang, gang, gang. Y'all only gang, gang. All right, that guys. That would be well, if he was like, I lost the fight, so y'all know. Yeah, know you outside next, of his right? house? Y'all hey, know what to do next. Yes. Go. Get, the, get everything. Get the value. By the way, goes. people watching this know that we're shooting mostly football right now. Just yeah, saying. but right. I beefed up my security like Drake. And I'm wearing my best shit. All right, I, I didn't do any of those things, so I'm kind of nervous. I keep, my um, money, I keep my money on me. <laughs> I'll take it with speaking me. Speaking of money, uh, you might want to be spending it on some porn money because they might be using that to build a wall. Comedian Finesse Mitchell is here to play How Many Fucks. But first, have you seen Ted Rath, the Rams director of strength and tr uh, training and performance? This guy is amazing in action. He's the get back Coach McVay guy. Get back Coach McVay, who has to pull Sean McVay away from running the officials. I don't know how he has a, well, a, a job like that. Well, it's let me a real tell you, job, but every, it is. every team has this guy on every on their staff because there's a, a line where the, officiates, the, officiate, the officials run down the line. If they trip, it's a penalty. So we have to stand. If you look on the sideline, there's the sideline, and then there's like a yellow line or a tape line that the team does, and players are supposed to stay behind that to give the refs room to run up and down the sideline. I had no idea, and I really had no idea how important this job really is. People think I'm just Sean McVay's get-back coach on the field. But the truth is, a get back coach's job is never done. Oh, coach, coach, get back, get back. Ooh. Coach, come on, get back, get back. That's right. Oh, coach, get back. Coach, get back, get back. It's soup day. Come on. Get back, coach, coach. Coach, 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 get back, get back. Oh, shoes untied. Get back. Oh my god! 
It's like I'm getting fired. You know what Belichick says. He says, do your job. All right. He played football at the U with The Rock and Warren Sapp. He starred on SNL with Maya Rudolph and Will Forte. And he did a movie with Dana Owens, Queen Latifah. So naturally, Finesse Mitchell is counting up fucks with Marty James and I. What's up, dude? What Appreciate you dude? coming for the show. You excited? Super Bowl week, man. It's a good yes, week to sir. come on. ATL, the hometown. Shout out to Southwest Atlanta and everybody getting ready to receive this thing. We just... I'm, I'm going to keep it really real, man. I, I, we happy the same thing there. So, you know. What position you play in football? I play cornerback, strong safety. Hey, I promise you, I've known this man for a while. I didn't know anything about your football life until the credits. <laughs> I'm like, say what? A lot of people say that. So yeah. like, he knows the rock. Oh, there's a movie? Is there a movie called The You? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Warren Sapp no. that you were in? B bruh, 19. Did they pay you? No, nah, they ain't pay me to go down there. Okay. Nah, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a great it. No, I walked on. Okay. And then uh, I played two years. We won the championship in 91. Swag. Came in with uh, Warren Sapp. Got to watch Ray Lewis. But that, that whole era, you know, of Ed Reed and even now Dwayne The Rock Johnson, that, that, that whole era didn't do too bad for themselves. No, it is. That's a nice guy, alumni right You there. know what you know about guys with, uh, from the U is, like, they don't give a fuck. So right? it's definitely yeah. cool to have you I, here. I think what was dope fucks. during that, that short time, though, was watching. It was so much talent that when Warren Sapp came, he was a tight end. And so when they said, just switch, can you switch? Because we short D tackles. And he like the best D tackle in, the, in that era of fo college football. I, that's, I, when I, that's when I was like, I'm supposed to be I on the bench. I committed, <laughs> I'm supposed to be on the bench. I committed to the U when I was a sophomore in high school. Uh-huh. Yeah. Why you switch? Uh, just, I mean, it was just crazy out there when I went out there. I was just like, I'm not ready for this life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, you're right. not built for that life. Yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. Now, a woman was barred from a Walmart in Texas because she was cruising around the parking lot at 6.30 in the morning drinking wine out of a Pringles can. It was happy hour somewhere, right? Clearly she didn't give a fuck, but do we? Time for how many fucks? That's sad. That's very how specific. impact the flavor of the wine? All right, first up, Mexico is not paying for the wall, you guys, so how about your porn habit does? An Arizona lawmaker introduced a bill that would charge people $20 to watch porn with a portion of the proceeds what? Going towards building an actual wall at $20 a pop. It's a hell of a lot of porn. Uh, Marty, how many fucks you give about the porn wall? Well, you heard of Uncle Sam tax, right? You already know how Uncle Sam tax. This is an Uncle Mandingo tax. They're <laughs> taxing. <laughs> They're taxing motherfuckers for self pleasure. Imagine every time you get ready to touch yourself, oh, and watching the screen, which is something like, is that like self process? Like, how is that working? Like, you already paying for a subscription, maybe, if you're a partner of your <laughs> friends of Pornhub or, you know, uh. Don't, don't start listening. <laughs> I know you. I know you. Don't start listening. I just feel like it's kind of like, Oh yeah, this make people who like to go home and masturbate pay for the wall. Like I don't see what the two even correlate. How you get from masturbation to building a wall? All right, I know because both is dumb as fuck. <laughs> when that's how many fucks I you give, hear about this master I plan. give uh, a negative sixty nine pumps fucks about this. <laughs> a negative sixty nine. So dumb, isn't it? It's dumb, man. You know what I mean? And I tell you what, if they're just correlating people who just have a bad habit. And just that's that you could pick anybody. You get more money with cigarettes. Lead it, why don't you jump on the cigarettes, people? Yeah, that's actually, that's Le actually leave that's us normal porn kind of people. I mean, leave, don't, leave the porn people. Yeah. <laughs> Le alone. At least you do a masturbation by yourself. Unless you're fucking Harvey Weinstein. Jeez. <laughs> I give I give five minutes worth of my new stand-up. Uh, 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 where the fucks? I, if when you see me doing this joke on the road, don't say shit. Yes, it came for this episode. This is fucking hilarious. This is two wrongs not making a right. The wall is wrong, and charging somebody. I'm like so hurt by this. Twenty dollars. It's every visit. Every visit, every porn visit, twenty dollars. So you got to do a lot of comedy yeah. specials to pay for that. That's that's that's, that's, that's some, like I, I, I give a free Dirk Diggler worth of fucks because like that, that man is an artist and his work should be appreciated for me. Yeah. I think so. All right, the Cutstown, Pennsylvania Police Department asked for three volunteers to get wasted to help officers with their field sobriety testing. That's a great idea. Booze was provided for free. Volunteers needed a designated driver, of course. The police's Facebook post was shared. 1,400 times in a town of 5,000 people. Marty, how many fucks you give about the cops trying to get people drunk in Pennsylvania? I give her super bad, super bad two. 
Yes. Worth the fuss, because this seems like the plot mm -hmm. <laughs> of a super bad movie. If they had to continue the movie, what was going to happen? This seems like the guys that are cops in the first one, Seth Rogen and those guys are now, you know, setting this whole thing up to try to learn how to do who's drinking and driving. But also, bring a designated driver to find out what police officers actually look for in drunk drivers so they figure out how to beat it. And how many people are drunk driving? I feel like in a town of 5,000 people, they probably be like, oh, damn, it's Jim again. Jim's over here drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's drinking. Jim, what is that? And I'll tell you this, too. I'll tell you this right here. I have a, I've come from a long line of pastors, right? We have a lot of pastors in the family. And I had this uncle who loves communion. Like, he just loves the wine and drinking of the blood of Jesus. So, but he was a town drunk, and everyone knows he's a town drunk. So... One day he's riding, swerving lane to lane, lane to lane, lane to lane, and the police officer pulled him over. Pass the bit, and you swerving a little bit back there. He's like, oh, you know, I just reached for my keys, officer. And the officer's like, it's like, nah, I think, have you been drinking? And you can smell the wine on his breath. And then the officer's like, and he's like, nah, I have not been drinking. He's like, what's in that cup? He's like, it's red. He was like, oh, shit, it is red. God damn it, Jesus done did it again. That was water <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I like the payoff. I ain't yeah, mad at that. My one. I ain't special. mad at that, James. I can't. He, he, was, he, was, he was paced. He took you on a walk. He took you on a journey. <laughs> he, delivered. he delivered. Look at Ben jealous. I he was, he delivered on that. I had a scale of three stand up comedians. That was pretty good. Yeah. How many fucks you give there? For Man, you? I give a 187 Snoop Doggy Dog Mad Dog 2020 number of fucks. Because I feel like that's some, that's 20% bullshit <laughs> to just have people come up there and say, hey, help out the cops, y'all get drunk, knowing, especially in Pennsylvania, as soon as you clock out, they're going to arrest your ass for being, you got to get home, so you're going to drive back home. That's yeah. entrapment. You got to know what the demographic is of this town, too. That's, that, that's, <laughs> I, and then the other, and then the other 20% of, <laughs> And then the other twenty percent of bad fucks. I don't. I don't know. That. Bad fucks. <laughs> it's all I give fuck. bad. I I twenty percent of I give bad no fucks. How many fucks? It's you all give, fucked James? up. It's all fucked up. Yeah, James. How many fucks about these cops out in Pennsylvania? Bad fucks. It's like, <laughs> uh, I give. I give. They should do this with weed, fucks. I think it's, I think it's a good idea. There's no better preparation than, than the real thing. It's just like football. Yeah, there's practice, but then there's a real game. You can prep for defense, but you got to know that when you see that real defense, that's a whole different thing. Same thing with drunk people. But what about people who smoke weed? They need to analyze them, too. I think they should invite three motherfuckers who smoke weed and do the same thing in that town. Obviously, that town, get down. <laughs> how drunk, how drunk yeah. did they get them, too? Did we get them sloppy drunk or just right. kind of drunk? Right. Right. The right. drinking exactly. limit? Like, yeah, two drinks per person. Do you Uber them home or do you yeah, let them the get across? Oftentimes, guys, these stories, they take place in Florida or Arizona, but this is Philadelphia. So <laughs> I give, this is Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. So I give a Philadelphia Eagles fan to the fucking world worst amount of fucks because mm -hmm. they're always drunk and I saw a woman throw a beer at another woman at a at an Eagles game and it haunted my dreams forever. So <laughs> fuck Pennsylvania. All right. A flight attendant on imagine, a plane. Imagine seeing your friend get shot when you're 16. What? Stop. Stop. Ah. Ah. It's so much different than mine. <laughs> a flight attendant on a plane from LA to Taiwan claims an overnight passenger uh, confined to a wheelchair made her, an overweight passenger confined to a wheelchair made her wipe his ass in the bathroom on board? What? While he, wait for it, moaned in pleasure on a previous flight now, this 400 pound man shit his pants. So forget turbulence, Marty. How many fucks you give for the shitting flight attendant? What? First of all, I give a sack of shit worth of fucks. First of all, 400 pound man, how the fuck is he? I'm six, I'm six, seven. I can't even fit in the fucking the lavatory. The wheelchair. He's in a wheelchair. He's 400 pounds. Yeah, I mean, he's in a wheelchair because he's 400 pounds, but not because, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, it's a difference between. Now, how many sit in the chair? Yeah, and then the other thing is, like, did his ass have to be, like, out the door for her to wipe it? Because anytime I go to the bathroom just to try to pee, it's like a plant Tetris trying to get in the fucking bathroom and try to figure out a way to get in there. What's so I just Tetris? don't. And how the fuck do you... Playing Tetris? How do you... Oh, playing Tetris. Yeah, yeah playing Tetris. Okay. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. How, do you, even sign, how yeah. did you even sign someone up as a flight attendant? When did this become part of the job? Because I might need my ass wiped next time I'm on a plane. <laughs> how many fucks you get? You didn't know they was wiping asses. I didn't know yeah, that either. right? I can't Shit. even get a, a cran apple, let alone get my ass wiped. I give a uh, no, uh, no two-ply ever needed number of fucks. 
because the last thing I'm doing is wiping anybody's ass on a plane. So it's dumb that, first of all, to even think, I've been in there. I've tried to have sex in them damn things just because it was supposed to be a club. You can't fit two normal-sized people in them things. No. So how are you going to fit 400 pounds? 400 pound guy. First of all, in there to begin with. And then the door has to be open it has in to be order open. for somebody to it wipe was his open. ass. Yeah, it was open. open. James so that means the whole damn plane in first class or wherever he was, was sitting a, I mean, could sue. James, how many, That's how many, bird how many box fucks? number of fucks. That's <laughs> the last thing I would ever want to see, bro. <laughs> I give, I give. That's today's my last day worth the fuck. Yeah. Like whatever that, this paycheck is for today. Yeah. The last time. Clock me out in the sky. Clock me out. I don't work here no more. And you, have you ever seen the ti the, the tissue on a plane? Yeah. It's, it's it's as thin as it gets. You gonna get some real boo boo on your hand. Your fingers go straight through. Yeah. You can't even blow your nose with that tissue. You can't. Nope. No. No. I wipe my ass with the Kleenex that they have on the side, that box on the side. I just pull out a whole bunch I of I wipe my ass with the you know, but, but the key part of that phrase, guys, that both of you are saying around now is, I wipe my ass. Yeah. 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 You're not having yeah. another person do this. And this is why I give a diamond status worth of fucks. This is why I work all year long mm. so hard. I put in that work to get my diamond status I on see. Delta because people who ask flight attendants to get their ass wiped for them, they get on the plane, they go right. 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 I like to go. Look. I'm gold. Whoa. So, hey, hey, I'm, hey, diamond I'm gold. I imagine that once you gold, here you might need to wipe my ass. <laughs> okay, oh, finally, uh, GoFundMe page has oh. been set up oh, in ouch. Liverpool, England, for the digger driver who destroyed a brand new travel lodge uh, over a $780 in unpaid wage dispute. So far, well wishers, uh, well wishers have raised nearly $3,800. Uh, this guy was so pissed on his check that he destroyed the whole damn building. Marty, how many fuck? For this guy. I give zero fucks about this, but I fuck with him, right? I fuck <laughs> with this dude, right? He had a problem. He wanted to do something about he get, and he went and tore down the building. I think he might. Did he take it too far? Maybe. maybe <laughs> this is the Marty problem solving <laughs> at its finest. Finesse. How many fucks? I give. Uh, they should have kept the light on form number of fucks, cause he came back. <laughs> they wasn't thinking about him coming back like that. James, that's good. James, how many? Get it, Motel Six. That's no, good. No, I, I got it. it. I got it. Okay. I got it. I got all right. it. Uh, following you. I give. I give uh, one anger management class worth the fucks. He's he's raised three thirty eight hundred dollars <laughs> because he can't control his temper. Out of all the causes, you gonna give this man money? Because he flipped out on some shit that he just helped build? Priorities, America? That's I not need America. Some money. That's, That's not, not America. America. But let me tell you That's this, right. though. Or, this what? Yeah, we Wait, what do you got? All right. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got? I'm a, you what do you got? All right. I just say I give a kindergarten where the fuck because this is how some kindergarten people You knock like, the blocks off. Like, oh, I'm like, you don't right. like my Legos? Fine. Right. I'm losing right. Jenga. Yeah. Exactly. Kindergarten. I'll shut down the government. Kinder <laughs> oh, <laughs> I Make sure to catch Vanessa's comedy special, The Spirit Told Me to Tell You, on Showtime. Appreciate you coming by, man. Absolutely. Vanessa is going to be doing some stand up on the road. You're going to be in Milwaukee. I'm going to be in Milwaukee, Potawatomi Casino. Uh, Sound like Auntie Takumpo. Yeah, you know, man, I was practicing that word too, Potawatomi, this Saturday. He'll be 6th. at the Improv in DC as well on February 7th to 10th. Mm. We appreciate you. Once you drive down by. to Green Bay, they need some black people down there. Coming up, them. another <laughs> funny dude, Brendan Schaub. <laughs> he's going to be hanging out on the show. Shout out to him. And plus, is Jerry Jones telling Jason Garrett who gets the ball in the Cowboys' offense? But first, a super deep thought from a super deep former Cowboy, Martellus Bennett. When you look at planet Earth from outer space, you don't see any divisions, no borders. Borders were created by man. Deep shit. Huh. All right, next up on the Mostly Football Couch, a man who can make you die of laughter or just kill you with his bare hands. Stand-up comedian and former mixed martial artist, Brennan Schaub is here. It's nice to see you. What's up, fellas? so great to have somebody in the show who could beat the shit out of Marty. It's very rare. I don't know if I can. He's a big dude. Oh, Any relation to Matt Schaub? No. Okay. So he no. could definitely be no. Yeah. No. No. He retired <laughs> yeah. years. You ago. played tight end uh, and H back for the University of Colorado and tried out for the Bills. Oh. Uh, I I played as much <laughs> football as you two for the Buffalo Bills. I had a cappuccino with them and they're like we're all set on slow white guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> cappuccino in exactly. upstate yeah. New York doesn't really go kind of. Didn't go well. But tight end and mixed martial arts kind of go hand in hand. 
Like, you know, the way you have to use your hands, to use your body, move around. And, a little bit. The yeah. work ethic, explosiveness. Yeah. A little bit. And but, then, we, but then when you get punched in the face, it's like, oh, this isn't football. Yeah, we train, because I train in the summer as MMA. Yeah, a yeah, lot of guys like, do. So, because the hand-to-hand -hand combat part, like, releases and, not, you know, all, the, like, catching the elbow and being able to maneuver and lay your weight on people and all that some shit. Some of it. Some yeah. of it. It can definitely help. There's cross-training there, but that's about it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not, I, ain't put, I haven't been in a while since I punched someone in the face. Thank God. So yeah, you're from Colorado. Let's, let's 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 talk about you and less about Marty. Uh, <laughs> so you're from Colorado. Now there's no Colorado NFL. Team. I guess yeah, the Denver, the Denver Broncos. Broncos. I mean, I mean how that, dare you insult you got, us like you that? You didn't let me finish. You gotta excuse him. Geography. Geography. No, it, it'll make sense finish. when he asks the question he's about to ask. Oh, he'll connect no, the dots. I know where you're going. NFL go. team left playing. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Oh, word. Are you with the Rams? Well, I've been in L.A. for 10 years now, so I'm a Rams fan. That's what I'm, I'm trying to say, fan. man. But the Rams haven't been in L.A. for 10 years. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> We're the best team in the league, so I'm a fan now. No, that's all the of best L.A. Team in the league. But that's how L.A. does it. Okay. If they're good, we ride with them. If they suck, exactly. we're like, oh, we don't. Exactly. So if halftime they're not doing well, like, I'm going to root for the other oh, team. I'm a Charger What's fan. the score in the Lakers game? game. Yeah, yeah, Lakers that's, game. that's every L.A. How's sports the Kings fan? doing? Yeah, that's how it goes. Super Bowl, we will change the channel if they start losing. What about the Chargers? Who? Who are they? Who are they? Yeah. Now, Jay, I thought James was going to go with, with this story for you because CBS rejected a Super Bowl ad uh, promoting the health benefits of medical marijuana because apparently their own CBS broadcast standards won't allow cannabis-related advertising. So instead, they'll probably run another ad for, like, you know, a really healthy product like beer or fast food or soda or something like that. All those, you know, pleasant-sounding side effects uh, of all the, you know, the terrible things. I know. They won't let you – they won't let you uh... – uh, yeah. advertise marijuana, but then it would be something else with some white people on a, a twin bike with double-seater bike riding through the wind, and it's like, yeah, herpes is not going to spread. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> right. no, totally. make, make sure you talk to your partner. Side effects are heartburn, cardiac arrest, brain damage. Insanity. Brain damage. Death. Insanity. You might jump out a window and light yourself on fire. Do what do you think drive. about this? How do you feel about the CB uh, CBS saying no to medical marijuana and CBD products and all that stuff? Well, the herpes ads are cool. That's helping people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, damn, out of all the commercials, maybe a Harley Davidson, but... Uh, so the the hate on marijuana, which helps tons of people, helped my son. My ha my son had uh, he suffered from uh, epilepsy seizures, and they wanted to give him all this medication. Now you give him CBD oil, and they stopped. They stopped. So they'll promote McDonald's, Coca Cola. You can get me fired from my Showtime show because CBS. <laughs> I don't care. So uh, they'll promote all all this fast food, but then when it comes to medical marijuana, they hate on it. It makes zero sense. Are you from the '50s? It makes zero sense. But it's CBS. Educate yourself. Educate yourself. It's CVS, and CVS, out of all those networks, does feel like the like stuffier, older network, the home of the Masters, and like go all the <laughs> yeah. golf tournaments. And They're on some reefer madness. You don't think yeah. Tiger Woods yeah. was getting high when he was with his hoes? All the what? time. What? We're what? talking about CVS. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, you're talking about the Masters and golf. We're talking about like up and up. You don't think golfers get high? <laughs> it just Not has really. nothing to do with it. Of let's, course. Let's switch gears. I want to ask you about why <laughs> you receiver seen the Cole Beasley video, so. uh, backtracked <laughs> on some comments he made earlier this week suggesting the Cowboys executives were meddling with the game plan, saying, quote, the front office play uh, pushes who they want to get the ball to and more balls come my way in two-minute drill when nothing is scripted or planned. So, wait, Jerry Jones is meddling and who gets the balls? What a surprise. you surprised by this, Brandon? No, I'm not because, I mean, you can speak to this, because he's not a high-touted, like, they, they're not putting a ton of money into that dude. He's the token white guy who always catches the balls. He's in the slot re receiver spot, so he's that guy. So they're not trying to big him up. You know, he's not trying to get a big uh, salary. They're not going to do that for him. But he's the go-to guy. So the two-minute drill, they have to throw it to him. That, you know, no one upstairs calling the shots. That's the way it goes. You know, come on. I, I totally agree. I felt the same way he felt about things. Where the money goes, where the ball goes. Where the money goes, the ball follows. That's where it flows. It's just the way that is. We put money into this guy. We want to make this guy a star. So we want to make sure he gets the ball. It doesn't really matter. Like, if, 
Like, if Beasley goes out and, like, he has his good games and he's able to make plays and he does a lot of things, but they're not going to future him in the offense. Like, he's not – the money's not there. So, they have to make sure that they make these big investments, especially, like, on somebody like Amari Cooper. They bring him in. They got to make sure he gets his targets so that he could get the production Correct. to also make the offense right. like they made the right decision. Because if he eats, then it makes them look good. Yes, yeah, so they got to validate Amari Cooper. now everyone yeah. was like, oh, it's the dumbest trade ever. Why would you give a first-round pickup for Amari Cooper? Then Amari Cooper had some good games. They throw the ball to him a lot, and they're not really spreading the ball around like that, you know what right, I'm saying? So right. now it's like, oh, man, maybe Amari Cooper is really good or is he just getting a lot more targets and the right targets and setting up the offense? Because the one thing we know as coaches is and schemes are what the defense is in. Is in. Like when I line up, I know if I'm going to get the ball or not based on the defense and the, 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 the defensive scheme that they're in like and the way the plays are drawn up. So coaches could kind of predict, you know what teams play on third down and what fourth down and what motions does. So you can kind of predict who's going to get the ball when you call the play. So a lot of coaches pay attention to that and they have call sheets they have call sheets where it's like they got touches. Like it was like 83. It's like all the plays that I'm most likely to get the ball. 15, all the plays Brandon Marshall's most likely to get the ball. So everybody got their certain amount of plays, and you could get them the ball. You want to get feels them the very ball. Cowboys like marketing that their best star players would get the ball. That's and every like, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah, usually can rap too. He has bars. I don't know if you guys know that. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, really yeah. bars. Yeah. Full yeah. bars? I didn't yeah, know that. All right. Yeah, well, a former rap. Dallas Cowboy, Greg Hardy, <laughs> should be behind bars, and he made headlines again <laughs> this week after getting disqualified <laughs> from his first UFC fight <laughs> for an illegal knee to his opponent's head in the second round. Round. Factor in the results. Uh, with this result with Hardy's, you know, checkered pass and all the backlash against the UFC for even allowing him to compete on the card in the first place. I mean, does he get another shot? You think in the octagon? Is this your boy? I don't want to fight in the well, studio. Well, first, is this I, your yeah, boy I, before I, I go hard. I, in the I just want to say this: that. Like, who cares? There was a woman that was dealing with domestic violence who they pushed out of the the the, the bill to put him in. They, they didn't push her out. She she. Uh, got beat up by her husband. Her name's Rachel Ostovich, who's a dime piece, like gorgeous. The hottest UFC fighter of all time. So she, <laughs> not that that matters. I'm just. Yeah, well, don't matter. Like, doesn't, doesn't matter, matter but she's yeah. really attractive. So she got beat up by her husband, right? And then they booked Greg Cardi after that. She didn't get pushed out, but he was higher on the, the billing. The, to me, though, what they're doing <laughs> is even with his checkered past, he doesn't have the skills to be a co-main event in the UFC. This makes zero sense. There's there's no plus side to this. The only plus side is us shitting on them and them getting attention from this, which the UFC goes, any media is good media. Bad, good, we'll, we'll take it. So that's what they're doing with Greg Hardy. But he has no business being in the UFC, zero. And also, beating women, that's not like my bad, I'm a better dude. <laughs> no. It's a character flaw. I don't yes. know anyone who does that. No. I have, no, I have no friends who have ever done that, and then they're just. You can't be friends if you do that. No, you, zero friends. Even no. the locker room. You know, you, yeah. whether you're in the NFL locker room, UFC locker room, if you hit women, you're out. There's a code of conduct. You're out, bro. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'm really disappointed. There's a weapon White for giving it's him a, a shot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, speaking of NFL fighters fighting and going against each other, we are going in depth on this Rams Patriots matchup. We're going to roll a tell of the tape for five individual Super Bowl matchups. You and we want you to tell us who's going to win, not on the football field, but in an MMA style cage fight. Rams and Pats about to get it on. <laughs> Why? First up, first up, why? <laughs> first up is why? Why Mr. Business that? Decision, Marcus Peters versus the Patriots. Where are you from, homie? The flying squirrel, paint size playmaker, Julian Edelman. Where are you from? Who gets the gumbo in this fight? The gumbo, I'm giving this all day to Julian Edelman for, for this reason. He's scrappy as shit, but I was at a party and one of my best friends, Tim Tebow, and he didn't know I was friends with Tebow and was trashing Tim. I was like, yo, dude, you gotta check yourself. And he wanted to fight me. Yeah. I was currently ranked in the top 10 in the UFC heavyweight division. Yeah. And he was down to throw down with me. So I, if he's that fucking crazy, he's definitely not scared of Marcus Peters. Yeah, I play with a lot of guys in the NFL. And if I'm going to war on a Sunday, the guy I always want to go to war with is Julian Edelman. So I too am picking Julian Edelman. The flying squirrel, no telling where his finishing move is going to be. But I just, I love Julian as a person and he does fight and he competes to the end of the match. Scrappy. I would love Marcus Peters to come at me and be like, where are you from, homie? I'm like, Midtown Manhattan, right by Central Park. What? <laughs> <laughs> if he really do bang though, Marcus Peters will fight you all day. But that, don't, but that doesn't, <laughs> all that doesn't day. mean he's going to win, though. Yeah. I didn't say he's going to win, but I'm saying it's going to take you a long time because he's doing it for the set, for the hood, for grandma, uncle. <laughs> well, no one's backing down here. You know what I'm saying? Edelman, no, 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 this is a good matchup. This, this is, is a great matchup. matchup. Yeah, I like this. This next one looks a little one-sided on paper, but you can't just hand the belt to Aaron Donald without breaking it down. So who is it going to be? 
the three Patriots O line man or the Rams one man wrecking crew? Aaron Donald against everybody. No. He beats up anybody. He looks like Black the Thanos in Dude, that picture. He looks, that, that's how he looks in real life. You ever <laughs> seen that man with a shirt off? He is yeah. swole. I was saying the other day watching the game, I was like, he might be just the best athlete in sports. Like Correct. any sport. I right mean, now. LeBron has an argument. He's up yeah, there. He, he's a look, I don't know. I don't know about that. You got to put, it's like Odell Beckham's an amazing athlete. Like, Look yeah, at but his, not at three, not at two ninety. It doesn't and matter. And tossing, dude. Bro, look awesome. at look at his neck. Bro, the, look at his. Neck. You know who Tequila Spikes is? No. Tequila Spikes didn't have a head. It was just all neck. No, <laughs> it, but it started here. Hey, it started here, went down like this. It looked yeah. like a human stingray. Yeah, it was yeah, neck, it like a stingray. Neck a trap. No, like it was just like. No. What is this? No, you ha you know how I knew I wasn't made for the NFL. My first day in pads, I had to do a block and drill against Tequila Spikes for a Buffalo. I was like. Oh, well, no. Well, no. <laughs> well, no. Check, please. Bro, Check, please. Bro, here's my You're right. I'm too slow, too. I'm so, out. No. Here's my Tequila Spike story. We have, uh, first of all, I'm 6'7", and then Jason Witten didn't want to play fullback, so me being the second tight end, they decided we play, put me on fullback and lead draw in the game. The and I'm in, th I'm in a three-point stance, and Mike Linebacker is Tequila Spikes, and he's like, no neck, no, like, he's just like 5'10", just standing there. I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to, I didn't drop down to a knee to try to block the guy, just like, we did it first time, I caught him off guard, good. Then they just want to run it again and again. I'm like, he knows I'm coming, I don't want to do that. But anyway, moving on to the title <laughs> fight in our heavyweight class, is this night, Nadamakan gets <laughs> Gronk. Well, this fight is just Gronk versus Nadama Kasu. Who's going to win this match? This is actually like a really good fight. This is a good fight, like a but Gronk's fight. always hurt, so he's never going right. to make it into that octagon. He's always hurt. He's a, he's a little too soft for me. Yeah. I think Sue does him dirty. It's all in the eyes. Dude, well, and also, Sue ain't passing no PED test in the UFC. That boy's been caught before. I so I'm assuming he's on some picograms and he's gonna mess. Gronk I'm gonna let out. you know, Gronk isn't soft. They just he just hurt all the time because he gives you his usage. If you drive your car all the time, the the miles go up on it. You break down more often. All right, but he's yeah. hurt. But I like. I mean, this is a good matchup. You got you know you try to get the stump by uh, the Dom Kasu, then Gronk probably does something like the. The white man's able. Gr Gronk was a doorman in college at a bar called Dirtbags in Arizona. So I give him a lot of credit. He was the bouncer at Dude, the bar. Sue will rip your throat I'm going to go with Gronk. You ever seen him stomp on dude's nuts Gronk, and stuff in I'm the gonna, game? Uh, yeah. He's so dirty? I don't know. Yeah. Gronk is like the Gronk's evolution of the bushwhackers, though, from WWE. So That's not good. Him. I don't know who's going to win this, though. I, I just know that. It's a good fight. I know I'm paying for the ticket because of Gronk, though, because I just want to see there him go, do yeah. his thing. Yeah. Probably crushing beer cans on his head like Stone Cold. All right, these two evenly sized opponents, both from Northern California, both pocket passers. You taking the kid or the goat? This was the easiest pick out of all of them. I feel like Goff is soft. I'm just, he's just real soft. Like I feel, you know, you kind of confront him, he's gonna back down. Pretty easy. Brady is a savage. A savage. I feel, yeah, this isn't true. a fight. And he I has think, probability. I think, think Brady would be minus 900 if this is a fight in Vegas. Like, this is the easiest one to pick. I know. Goff definitely looks like one of those dudes at Coachella who spent $900 for a VIP ticket, but he's still, yeah. like, in Gen Pop, kind of. You know what I mean? No, he looks like the dude always <laughs> in the friend zone with every girl. That's <laughs> what he looks like. He looks like the meanest dude in Laguna Beach. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 the, like, he fights people who surf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah I'm going that's I'm cool. going with TV 12 in this one. This yeah. one's so easy. Viability. Yeah. Avocado. And toast. finally, our main event pits the wizardly of McVeigh against the brilliance of Belichick. It's the golden boy versus the hooded one. Who's winning this epic, epic cage match? Looks like he's out of Star Wars. Right? So looks Star Wars. I, I'm just, I, I know you guys are fans of I'm Sean McVeigh. I'm taking the young blood. He's a genius. He's going to stay on the outside and jab the piss out of stupid Belichick's face. It's going to be an easy fight for him. Just stay on the outside. I don't know. I just feel like Belichick doesn't, I just feel like he's like, he'd be like mankind in you wrestling. Think? Yeah, just like, you know, take the sock out of his thing and stick it in. Like, why dirty, are you doing dirty. that? Or like Gold Dust, kind of like one of those type of guys when he's wrestling. Gold Dust. Yeah, old, strong old, yeah. Gold I like dust. it. Strong well, reference. Yeah, yeah. I'm going, I get I'm more going of a with Belichick vibe. as well. I, mean, I feel like Bill Belichick is the reason Marty's a Super Bowl champion. So, I mean, that in itself is an incredible power. So, I'm going to go with Coach. Coach. I'm Bell. also taking Sean McVay just because his girl. You ever seen his girl? No, nah, but Sean McVay uh, reminds me of like an Owen Hart. And I feel like mankind would beat Owen Hart. All right, well, from one Hall of Famer <laughs> and Bill Belichick to another in a different sport. Oh, I have another piece of news. Yes. You are the first person. Yeah! 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 Yeah!
Hats off to the legend, Mariano Rivera. The Yankees' closer became the first unanimous selection to the Baseball Hall of Fame. A little baseball talk here for you on Mostly Football. So, time now for the Marty Awards. My Marty Award this week goes to Shia LaBeouf. He's got a film at Sundance, gonna pre premiere tomorrow. It's called Honey Boy, and he wrote it about his life growing up in Northern California, the son of an ex-clown. The fact that this dude has the courage to create art when he knows that he's always gonna be memed and gifted and trolled on the internet. He doesn't give a fuck. He makes the art he wants to make. It's the first movie I'll be seeing tomorrow at Sundance. So shout out to Shia for having the bravery to create and talk about his life. I think that's very cool. Love Shia. I love Shia. I love Shia. Ever since even Stevens. Okay, old school. Yeah, I love Shia. For day one time. fan. He's one of my, yeah. Day, I mean, one, day from one from the jump. Yeah, day one. I love well, it. my Marty Award this week goes to Stevie's Creole Cafe here in LA. Bomb. I've been to a lot of places of Soul Food. Soul Food, a lot of people don't get it right, but they get it right there. So shout out to Uncle Stevie and the family down there cooking up all them delicious greens and fried chicken and cornbread. If you want to feel black for a day, go ahead and go down to Stevie's and eat some Soul Food. <laughs> and get that gumbo. They get the gumbo. gumbo. Oh, the gumbo is good. On point. If you don't know where Marcus Peters should get his gumbo from, and you want some of that Marcus Peters gumbo that they don't have it in Louisiana. Come Stevie's. on down to Stevie's. It's so good to make you want to slap your mama. And it was featured on season one of Hood Adjacent. Is it my turn? What is it's that? It's your turn. Oh, it's my turn? All right, my Marty Award goes to Dak Shepard. Yeah. Not for his acting, although he's a great actor. Because I live in the podcast world, it's hard to separate yourself, and Dak Shepard has done that. He has a podcast called The Armchair Quarterback, and it's amazing. I think it's arm yeah, Armchair Quarterback, and it's amazing. It's dope. Ar might be Armchair Expert. Either way, it's really dope. His wife has been on there. They were, like, in a fight, and she came on. They figured it out. It's one of the best podcasts out there. I like the dude. Good he shit. gets my award. Good yeah, shit. I was All right. to listen to Revenge of the Jocks. I was, I was like, how will Marty how, plug his how, podcast? Indeed. How will Marty plug the Lions Den podcast on iTunes? <laughs> how will he do that? How? How, how, how can we Not plug ourselves? Yeah. I have no plug this week, but I mean, you know, <laughs> Live from the Town is on the Comedy Central app. Uh, I'm putting my Marty Award this week between Meek Mill and Jay-Z. Okay. Maybe I'll even spring for two Marty Awards. These rappers are partnering with the Coalition for Criminal Justice Reform. Meek, of course, became an activist after being in prison for some dumb shit. And a couple of rich brothers coming together, working on activism and doing their thing. Meek, Hove, go ahead and put that Marty Award on your mantle. We see you. Yeah, shout out to Michael Rubin as well, owner of the Sixers, yes. who's part of that coalition. Very cool. All right, one of the latest fads is the 10-year challenge. You've seen it. It's a narcissistic ploy to post a picture of yourself from 2009. <laughs> then one from today, where you look fitter and richer and flex on your homies. <laughs> Here at Mostly Football, we have our own challenge, except we're looking 10 years into the future. Future. For example, Tom Brady today, Tom Brady in 2029. Can I get an amen? I thought we'd probably still see him in the Super Bowl in 10 years, no? No, that's actually Oh, it's him that's, winning that's, another that's, Super Bowl. That was a championship yeah. parade. Right. Uh, Bill Belichick today and Bill in 10 years, looking like Mama Fratelli rocking a hoodie. The Goonies! Goonies never say die! Sean McVay is looking the exact same, like he got that Benjamin Button going on. Next. <laughs> Todd Gurley is not aging so well. I mean, he, he, he's got that no woman, no cry, exodus. Look, uh, what will Marty look in 10 years? Just a dope <laughs> motherfucker. Yes, they deserve to die, and I hope they burn in hell. <laughs> and here it's been in 10 years. Whoa, what happened, man? All that yoga and wheatgrass was supposed to help. You look worn, man. You gotta iron your face. All right, uh, as for yours truly, yeah, I'll take that. Let me get some of that Chappelle That's cheddar. You know what I'm saying? I'll be wearing leather jackets with my name on it. Oh, man, I didn't see that in the pre-production meeting. <laughs> what a surprise. Uh, yeah, like right, that that's too. good. Well, I wonder what the Lakers will look like in 10 years. Maybe by then, Bronny James is going to be racking up triple doubles and triple Oaks. gold. Uh, you're a Lakers fan, right? I'm a Lakers fan. I'm a big LeBron fan. No, I wasn't LeBron really a Lakers fan until LeBron came. All right, well, we caught up with current Lakers, I'm that Josh guy. Hart, to find out who the biggest Baddest dude on the team is, and here's a hint, it's actually not LeBron. Duh! I like Sean Taylor last month. Like that tough, junkyard dog mentality, just physical. I gotta go with that one. First of all, I'm gonna bust that ass. I'm gonna just be, be straight with it. So he'll put up a good good fight, but I'll probably 11 7 me. I'm 
Michael Beasley. Bees is crazy. You never know what you're gonna get with Bees. Bees is that one guy that you just know, no matter what happens, you just always have to have him on your side. Floyd Mayweather, cool, dope, always got all his ice on and everything, so definitely Floyd. I think CP though going to blame first. They're both my guys, but Rondo, he's wired very differently. Probably Enos Cancer. He trash talks a lot, and I just can't take that that trash talk serious. Come on, man! Shouts out to once a Nick, always a Nick, Enos Cantor, huh? Hey, man! You know, I ain't got nothing to say about Enos. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, hey, you got a podcast? Let's promote it. Uh, Firing the Kid, Blow the Belt on Showtime. And you're doing stand-up all over the place? You, you got any stand gigs up? coming up? You're out here in L.A. all the uh, time? I mean, I just shot my first Showtime one-hour comedy special. Wow. That'll come out uh, later this year. So I'm Very cool, What's man. better, Showtime or Comedy Central? I think Showtime, I think man. Showtime, I don't know. Man. Yeah, it's premium. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, no. but, but I'm on this. But hold on, hold on. But, but, <laughs> hold on, I'm on. This is not happening on the Comedy Central though. Oh, it comes okay. out in June. All right, all right. They're done. It's hey, what happens hey, if you guys are doing so much. Hey, if, you, if you, everybody, if you want to see this special, it comes out in the future. But if you want to see some comedy right now, <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much, dude. Yeah, no problem. By. Thank you guys. You guys are great, man. Anytime. You. Ladies and gentlemen, hear ye, hear ye. All hail Sir Benjamin of House Lions, the king of gambling. Good to reign in my court with all of my fake winnings, the story of my career. Adam, welcome back to the kingdom. How does it feel to be one half of our mostly football court jesters? Uh, considering I'm wearing a jester's outfit that's tighter than a corset, uh, not too good. I hate how long you walked. As you can see, be quiet, peasant. As you can see, I'm the ruler of this gambling domain. <laughs> but let's see how we got here, shall we? James and Adam, despite your valiant efforts, you came up rather short. James, you finished exactly even on the year, which is almost more impressive than me winning. So you got absolutely nowhere after 17 or 20 weeks of football. Adam, you won $200 on the season. Sitting alone at the top is yours truly with over $2,400, which is more money than I'm making for doing this silly show of fake money. Now, if you rode with my picks, you would be up almost 150% on the season, which is not bad. What's with your accent? I don't know. It's somewhere in between. It's going in and out. I can't quite figure it out. You have an explanation. Again, be quiet, peasant. (laughs) The game is over. The big game is over a week away. But, Adam, let's get your first impression on the Super Bowl line with my Super Bowl LA Rams. All right, so before we get to your pick at some point this week or next week, this game opened as a pick 'em, and we've seen the money come flooding in the Patriots right now. So I think there's a little value on the Rams at plus two and a half right now. Listen, they're only getting 18% of the bets on them going into Super Bowl week. And teams that got less than 30% of the bets on them this year, they covered at a 50%, excuse me, 57% clip. So obviously some value right now on the Rams, and that's why I'm leaning on taking them right now, well before the Super Bowl getting two and a half. You have the king nervous because you are a jester, and if you're leaning on the king's team, that cannot be good. So I'm concerned, but that is not your official pick. You're leaning towards the Rams. Leaning towards the Rams. Leaning towards the Rams. Leaning towards the Rams. All right. One of the best parts, however, of Super Bowl week, it's all the absurd prop bets, of course. You can place them just about on anything. Uh, What do you like next Sunday in the props? Uh, let's see, where should we start? How about, let's take a look at the Gatorade bath odds, okay? Because yeah. those are always the most fun. Now, if you guys do some research out there, you know that this prop has been out for a number of years, and you can bet on pretty much any color of the rainbow that you want to see the winning coach get doused on. Do some research. You go back to the last 13 Super Bowls. The color orange and a clear liquid have been the most popular colors to get doused on, although Belichick somehow, someway, has missed getting doused three of the Super Bowl wins that he's experienced. Wow. So you never know if the Pats are going to win on Sunday. He may somehow avoid getting the Gatorade bath. Is that a push? Do you lose? Uh, it's a push because it's not yeah. on the uh, – there's no, no water. Yeah, no dumping is basically not on the – you know, not part of the bet. So if you're going to take that prop, lean the color orange – 
or clear liquid because those are the most popular winners over the last 13 years. And the other popular Super Bowl prop bet we're looking at is the over-under for the National Anthem. Oh, take the over. Always take the over. Yes, Gladys that's Knight, right. Atlanta Native is singing it this year. And if you look at the last 13 Super Bowls, the average length of the National Anthem has gone over two minutes. I think right now the over is about one minute, 45 seconds. So pound, load that yeah, over. Absolutely. Final right. Gladys. Yeah. <laughs> Final Gladys. Yeah, I got to soak up that stage, huh? Yeah, exactly. Take the over. All right, switching to something that's actually a little bit more in my wheelhouse. Uh, the Oscar odds, and they were released for Best Picture. Roma leads the way, even money. Golden Globe winners The Green Book and Bohemian Rhapsody are middle of the pack, and Black Panther is tied for the longest shot. James, who do you like to take home the statue? A Star is Born. I don't know, guys. I liked it. All the girls that I interact with, they really like it. And that's who I go with. How many times have you seen The Star is maybe, Born? Maybe three or four, you know? <laughs> You've seen the, the Star is Born on four first dates. It, you know, it gets them, we're, we're talking about our goals, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're, in a, we're in a very vulnerable place afterwards. Did you cry? Did you not? You know, I'm just, it's, A Star is Born. I, I saw it. I know the folks at ABC will be very excited to hear that Roma is going to win Best Picture, because I'm sure all of America will rejoice that a streaming Spanish language film uh, about the 1970s in a small Mexican town will win Best Picture. So um, thank you, Adam. As always, back to your duties as jester, entertaining us all with your silly dances and lack of smiling. Adam's been riding with the Rams all year long, as has James, who's been riding with all the teams in California. I even heard him say, go 49ers at one point. <laughs> Let's see who our ugly ass dog is gonna pick for the Super Bowl, shall we? <laughs> Dumbass dog. Uh, former Raider and Cowboy Darren McFadden was arrested for a DWI, not a driving while black, a real crime, DWI, after falling asleep in the drive through lane of a Whataburger in Texas. Shout out Whataburger. Of course, it's gotta be a former Raider. We'd be doing dumb stuff even though we got that commitment to excellence. Time for You're Better Than That. Florida State apologized after tweeting an image of Dr. King doing the tomahawk chop while wearing a Nike glove with the slogan, do something. Oh yeah, they tweeted the image on Martin Luther King Day. How many Seminole recruits decommitted after seeing that? Uh, that school is kind of racist. Maybe I should uh, get hit somewhere else. And why does everything twisted always happen in Florida? Florida, get your stuff together. You're better than that, Florida State. Oh, there were fucked up. There were meetings. There was Obviously, like Martin memos. Luther, right? Martin Luther King would have went to TSU. Our parting gift tonight is an epic dance battle. 10-year-old Dominique and 9-year-old Anthony, who are regulars at the 76ers games, get into it across the arena. Shirts were taken off, the crowd went crazy, and Bede and Simmons don't have shit on these boys. Shout they out. shooting jumpers from across the court, which Simmons cannot do. <laughs> shout out to those dudes. That's real fan life right there. And a special shout out to the king of Madison Square Garden, Carmelo uh, Anthony, who still holds the record for most points scored in the Garden, the world's most famous arena, on this date five years ago when he put up 62 against the Bobcats. Just wanted to put that out. We know you're watching, Carmelo, because you I'm ain't got like no game tonight. The one Carmelo one fan left on planet Earth not named Lala or Keon. So oh, watch Lala us every Thursday at 7 o'clock Eastern and 4 o'clock Pacific on Yahoo Sports and Complex. And next week, we're going to be coming to you live from Atlanta. That's right, the site hey, of Super Bowl hey, 53. Hey. James probably won't have the same outfit on. There's a good chance I'll be dressed like this, though. We've got lots of surprises. <laughs> Maybe Martellus is going to announce he's coming out of retirement. Maybe make another run. Well, no, that will not be happening at <laughs> all anytime soon because you can't smoke weed. Well, actually, you can't smoke weed in the NFL. You just know how you got to know how to beat the system. Well, you definitely can here on Mostly Football, and we'll see you next week down in Atlanta. So, for Marty and James, I'm King Ben. Peace out. Go Rams. King Ben? Yeah, but King like Uncle Ben's fake rice. money. Oh, right. yeah, party King in the ben. house. That's right. Yeah, Atlanta. here we go. Oh, uh, we going, We're going to Atlanta. Atlanta. Complex Networks.